Good morning, people of Holden and Dalla. This morning, our journey through the narrative lectionary takes us to the story that comes from Genesis 27 and 28 of Jacob. And we'll begin at Genesis 28. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and he laid down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Clearly the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. The word of the Lord. Long, long, long ago, the Celtic saints in the British Isles had a term that they used to talk about a place where they could feel God's presence. Those places where they could feel God's presence close to them, where they could feel God's presence made known to them, they called thin places. They talk about places as thin places where the spiritual atmosphere of a place made it easy to connect with God, easy to pray, almost as if there was no barrier between heaven and earth. Today, in our reading from Genesis, we hear about Jacob being in one of those places, a place where God was tangibly real, tangibly present. We heard that as Jacob was sleeping, he had a dream, a dream in which he saw a stairway, a ladder, depending on the translation, resting on the earth with its top reaching up to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. See, there above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. You will spread out to the east and the west, to the north and the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you, and I will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Now Jacob has this dream, and he awakes from sleep, and he thinks, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. We hear that Jacob was a bit afraid, and he said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of of God. This is the gate of heaven. Jacob in that moment was in what the Celtic peoples would have called a thin place, and he named it out loud, saying, the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. And how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Throughout the Bible, there are many stories like this, where people come to recognize God's presence, recognize the gates of heaven in a very specific place, sometimes in a very specific location that they then give a name to. In Exodus, we hear about Moses standing on holy ground as he hears God's voice coming to him from a burning bush. We hear that he takes off his shoes because he recognizes the holiness of the moment the holiness of the place. Often in the Old Testament, mountains are considered to be holy places where people come close to God and his presence. For Jesus in the New Testament, we know that there are many places where he goes to pray, but also the temple is a place for him that is holy, where even a teenage Jesus can recognize God's presence and know he is standing 
in God's house. This morning, as we consider these places where we feel God's presence, these places that are thin places for you and me, where God is tangibly with us, take a moment. Where are the places you have seen and felt God? Where are the places that you have known God's presence? As I reflect on the story of Jacob this morning and this place where he is so very aware that God is with him, I think of two different places in my own spiritual journey. The first was my college chapel at Loyola College in Maryland, surrounded by the loud, vibrant city streets and the busy traffic of Baltimore. The chapel was an oasis for me of peace and quiet. As a busy college student with way too much going on at times, I also worked in the chapel, sometimes early in the morning for a worship service, sometimes late at night, sometimes when the church was filled with music, other times when it was so silent you could have heard anything I said. Students sometimes filled that place with their energy and their conversations, and sometimes I was there alone. There in that chapel for four years, I worshiped and prayed, I worked and I listened for God's voice. Through life's decisions and all sorts of ups and downs and college drama, I was drawn there to that chapel because I could sense God's presence with me in that place. It was a thin place for me where I could say, God is here, I can feel him. I could say what Jacob said, how awesome is this place this is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Another place where I have powerfully felt God's presence is completely different from that Loyola Chapel. It was outdoors on a beach at Luther Crest Bible Camp. There on the shores of Lake Carlos, where the wind blows gently, where you can hear loons call, where you can hear the laughter of children, where I am surrounded by women of faith, of many generations. I feel God tangibly with me. I find myself saying when I am there, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. For each of us, our holy places, our thin places may be different. It may be here in the sanctuaries of our churches. It may be out in the cemeteries where we walk in the beauty of nature and are surrounded by the communion of saints who have gone before us. It may be on the shore of a lake. It may be in our cornfields and soybean fields. It may be out at night looking at the stars in the dark night sky. As Christians, you and I believe that God is present and active in our world and in our lives in ways big and small, easy to see and harder to notice. We all have moments like Jacob where God's presence is easier for us to see and hear and feel. And we exclaim, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Amen.